Welcome to The Painting Coach and I'm very excited and also very grateful to you guys for sending in your questions and I thought rather than me just reading them and answering them, I would rope in a glamorous assistant. This is my friend Ben. Say hello Ben. Hello Ben. Ben is one of my good friends in the community and he's helped me out a lot and we've shot some really nice content so there's some exciting things coming uh, your way for the channel. So let's just jump straight in. We've had lots of questions. Again, thank you so much for them. Some of them are quite similar mm -hmm. so if we answer it once we won't go to the second question but hopefully i'll be able to to answer it on that of course if you do have any more questions let me know down in the comments uh, and i will do my best to to reply to you and there's probably a video for it as well because there are so many videos you have, a, on the you have at least one or two videos <laughs> yeah from... maybe three for some we'll see yeah. so let's let's jump we're gonna do some patron questions first so uh, for my patrons they'll get the priority and then we'll work our way down through instagram and uh, also Twitter, which I've not told you about. So surprise, uh, we've got some hey. Twitter questions as well. Uh, but we'll work our way through that way. So we'll do Patreon, we'll do YouTube, and we'll do Instagram. And then if we've got some time left, we'll do the Twitter questions as well, or X, as it now Excellent. is. Hit me up. The first question is from Paul Humphreys. Okay, Paul, And he nice says, you. do you have any plans in the future to do a guide on the AOS Harbinger of Decay model? That's a beautiful model. It's the uh, guy Nurgle? on the horse, Nurgle. Yeah, yeah it's yeah, really, cool. really nice. Um, no is the short answer I'm afraid to start with. Uh, if, I had, if I had time, it's something I'd love to do, so I may do in the future. So I'm not saying never, but in the first kind of couple of months of 2024, probably not, I'm afraid. Okay. So this is a few different ones, depending on where you want to pitch it. In your videos, you use a mix of paint brands, and in others, you mostly stick to Citadel. Have you got any VMA chrome? Is that driven by preference or by what colors you're using? Is it good to mix brands available to get familiar with one or two? Personal hobby goals for 2024. What has been your most rewarding hobby experiences since starting the channel? And out of the hobby, as from Discord, Baker Mayfield, 2024, yay or nay? <laughs> and that's from Marcus Cross. I'll, do you want me to go over the first one? Uh, I'll pick up the, so thanks Marcus for the question and for the multiple questions. Yeah. Uh, Marcus has been in support for a very long time, so I'll allow him to have uh, several questions there. So I'll try and answer what I remember and then you can pick me up if I forget. Yep. So Baker Mayfield, yay or nay? Probably yay. I think he's probably, uh, we were talking about this earlier, we, were. we think that actually he's probably won the dressing room a little bit. So uh, yep. yeah, give him another year uh, and hopefully with the right schemes and getting the ball through I think we probably need to get the run game. We need a run game to. Yeah. I'm going to talk about this because this is my <laughs> as well. As we were discussing, yeah. we need a run game to take the pressure off him because he's taken so many bangs this year. Yeah. The amount of times I've seen cutting to him and he's limping or hobbling or he's just happened to be a very tough man on the field right now. And mm. I think having a run game will take a lot of that pressure yeah. off him. So, so that's the NFL question answered. Uh, back to painting. So, um, personal hobby goals for 2024. I can't believe mm. it's 2024. Uh, oh. We're going to be doing a 2000 point uh, New Year, New Army. And that's why I'm here with Ben. We've been filming the first video for that. So that's going to be coming up probably the start of February. Yep. Uh, that we're going to launch that series. I'm really excited about that. Um, we're also, or for 2024, I also, we, we, Golden Demon is happening at some point for 2024 in the UK. It's not been announced yet. Nobody seems to know where we're at with that. So obviously entering Golden Demon again uh, and seeing how well I can do there would be great. And uh, yeah, so I've got, I've got lots of bits and pieces I need to get done and finished as well. So I'm going to be working on those. What's now? What's, uh, what's been your most rewarding hobby experience since starting the channel? Two things probably. I think one is when people send me messages saying that I followed your guide and it was really, really good, and I'm really chuffed with my model, I could never have done it. But that's great, that makes me feel good, and that's what the channel is here for, that's why it exists. And the second one, I think, is probably meeting some of you guys, either uh, on Discord chats, or at Warhammer Fest last year as well, that was really, really good. Um, it's really nice to uh, to kind of put uh, faces to names. So yeah, if we're at an event, I'm definitely gonna be at UK Games Expo this year. Obviously, I'll be at Warhammer Fest, and maybe a couple of other events I'm, I'm at as well. But yeah, definitely come, come along and say hi. Uh, it'd be really nice to meet as many of you as I can. The paint question is interesting. I always use VMA, Vallejo Model Air Chrome, mm -hmm. because the consistency is perfect for highlighting silver and you don't have to do anything with it. Uh, and it covers really well. It's got fantastic coverage. So I always use that. In terms of mixing brands, I think for someone like me, I've got so many paints. How many paints have you got? That's over over 60. Enough, yeah. Yeah, over, so, yeah. So when you use the Citadel system, it's designed so you've got a base layer and a highlight. And lots of other manufacturers are designed like that. So two thin coats, for example, uh, game color. The Vallejo model color range is probably not like that because it's, it's probably aimed at a different crowd. But I think I'd always encourage you to experiment with different brands because it's nice to have that in your 
Arsenal, yeah, 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 and your yeah. toolkit. And I think yeah. I wouldn't sort of say you have to use this colour because what works well for me might not work so well for you. Mm -hmm. I can say, because I'm out of non-disclosure now, that the Army Painter Fanatic range is really good. I've painted one model entirely with them. I've got a review coming on the channel where I'll paint several models to get a feel for what it's like. But I'm really excited by those paints because they seem to be really nice. Um, they've got really nice consistency. They blend really well. But yeah, so, so I, th I think when it comes to paints, my preference is to use what works for the job. So if I know I'm painting black, I'll always base it with AK Black because that's the best cover in black. When it comes to the channel, I always use mainly Citadel paints. And the main reason for that is because they're the most readily available. If there's a Games Workshop or a Warhammer store or a Games Workshop stockist, you can get Citadel paints. And that's why I, I tend to stick to them for the channel. Excellent. Why are you so handsome? That's from Patrick Taylor. Patrick at the painting phase. Thank you, Patrick. I gen generally, I think it's just my age. I think I'm, I'm just, yeah, as I'm getting older, there's, there's going to be a tipping point where it just goes down. Fine wine and <laughs> cheeses <laughs> and Lloyd. I'll like get better cheese. with age. I like cheese. Yeah. Everybody loves cheese. Shouldn't eat cheese, but I do like cheese. So that, I think that's it for the Patreon questions. It well, is indeed. We're on to Instagram now. We're on to Instagram. Excellent. So let's go on to Instagram. Let's see what we've got. Oh, some guy called More Warhammer has asked three Never questions. Never heard of him. No. Minor so, account. So I am going to ask the first one of these. So what's your least favorite part of a model to paint and what's your most enjoyable part? Mo Warhammer's Ben. That's me. That's him. But yeah, he's asking these questions. So please do go and check out uh, his, his Instagram and his uh, YouTube channel. He does look really good uh, box to board builds. So he gets the box, builds it, gets on the board, how long does it take? So it's really interesting. So it's completely different to kind of painting one model like I do. So please do check that out. Um, Worst, I don't really know what the worst bit of a model is. I think it's probably, at the moment, it's probably the metallics. It's something I'm not enjoying yeah. as much. Um, but I think it can change depending on my mood sometimes. And I think that depends on the paint. So that's one of the reasons I'm really excited about the Armour Paint Fanatic range. The coverage is great. So actually painting metallics is going to be really easy and quick. Up here. Yeah. yeah, so it's going to go quite fast. My favourite part of painting on a model is, again, it's very dependent but I think sometimes you may have this and you may have had this as well is where you paint a model which looks like a hot mess and then you put the final few highlights on actually yeah it totally brings it together and, yep. and it kicks off so I think that's probably my favorite part of, of painting the model. Excellent. What's your next question? Uh, what colors do you recommend if you're limited do you need them all? So this is more of a question I, I, it's cool because I can fill this out a little bit more if someone's limited to maybe 10 paints what would be the five you'd be like you have to have those. Mm. So I think you can paint any anything with five or six paints. Mm -hmm. And those paints are magenta, mm -hmm. black, white, a cold yellow, a warm yellow. I think it's a cerulean blue. So if you have those six paints, I've actually got a video on this on the channel how you paint anything with just five paints. You can mix every single shade, color, under mm -hmm. the sun with those uh, six paints. Uh, and that means you, get, you can still get vibrant greens by using the colder yellow, and you can get warmer oranges by using that warm yellow. Mm. And this is when they, you may have used chim chimera paints, which are like single pigment paints, they're really powerful. Um, they do great magenta, cold yellow, warm yellow as well, but they're quite hard to get hold of. I probably wouldn't recommend it for painting armies. And that's where you have things like the triad system that Games Workshop use for painting armies to get that consistency across them. Whereas if you display painting, you maybe just want to focus on some and, and practice your technique. That's a way of doing it. Okay. Last question. Best from way you, to, but not yeah, the last question. Yeah, from, from me. The best way to look after your brushes. This comes up a lot. I'm not the best person to ask about this because <laughs> I see brushes, I see tools. And I use, so again, so we'll answer all these questions at the same time. So um, I use Rosemary and Co. Uh, series 33 brushes, size 1-0-0-0. I also use that 3 2 3 range, zero, size 0 for detail work and edge highlighting because it's a much smaller brush so it's easier to get the, the tight highlights on. In terms of looking after them, I'm not fantastic but I do wash them every now and again, probably once a month. I'll give the Masters brush soap and I'll use that to, to clean them and there's plenty of videos on YouTube about how to use Masters brush soap but, but that just helps them live a little bit longer. So that's sable hairbrushes. I'm currently trying out the synthetic red dot line from Rosemary & Co as well, um, which look great. I've not used them very much, but they don't curl up straight away. A lot of synthetic brushes, one of our first use, once you, they touch water, they kind of curl on the tip. Yep. Um, so they don't do that, which is good. So I'll, I'll probably, not maybe do a review, but I'll certainly let people know my thoughts if they're on a par with natural sable hair. Excellent, so that's all the questions that more will hammer. Had. Okay, thank you, Mo Warhammer. You're welcome. There's always more Warhammer. Always. So this is Ali.read1. 
faces and eyes of all types, light tone, dark skin tones, different orc skin, different types of zombie skin. I don't know how there's a question. <laughs> all of the skin. Just all the skin. Sounds like a request. The good news is that I've got videos on all of those different things on the channel, whether it might be a slightly longer video on like two or three minutes long, but I've got a lot of short form content and they're all on the Instagram account, they're on YouTube as well, so you can find them there. So that's the flesh, how to paint skin. Eyes. Just it's common. It's I mean, it's I the eyes have come up a lot. Yeah, just, just don't. <laughs> just don't. Basically, there's no need to paint them because, again, remember if you're looking at models from four feet away, you're not going to see anything other eyes. than right here. Yeah, you're not going to see no. the eyes. You're really, not. You're it's, right. it's it's. I would say from, from we were talking about this the other day, the amount of time you'd need to spend trying to get it right, you're probably going to find yourself being more angry and not wanting to do it. Yeah, than just. Putting it, I just put a slightly darker wash around the eye to kind of separate it from anything yep. else, and then yeah, that's it. Like, you don't really need to do eyes. Yeah. I think if you're when you look at a space marine head, for example, if you look through and I when I'm painting eyes because I do for my sins paint eyes, and I very rarely show you how to do it on camera, it's because I have to wear four times magnification glasses and I can't do that and get that all in focus on camera, yeah. So if you look through 4X magnification at a Space Marine head, for example, the eyeball and the eyelid are sculpted. However, unless you put really, really thin layers of paint on, as soon as you put two layers of just normal Cadian flesh tone, it's you kind of, you're getting yeah. rid of some of that detail, so it's really difficult then to place the eyeball. So I'd say generally don't worry too much about painting eyes. If you must paint eyes, if you absolutely have to paint the eyes, then what I'd say to do is use an off-white colour like an ivory colour maybe, you don't want bright white because it'll be too stark. Bright ivory colour, put a little bit of a, maybe like a flesh wash over it so you get the definition and then you can just tidy it up and try and dot that pupil. But do all of that before you paint the face. And then paint the face around the eyeballs because that way you can be a little bit messy. Yep. You don't have to worry about mistakes, you can just tidy up over it with some flesh paint. Excellent. Next question is from Coffee Paints. How do you get the right paint consistency for each type of paint, i.e. bases, shades, washes, glazes, etc.? I can never seem to nail the consistency and it takes a lot of trial and error. Unfortunately, trial and error is the way to learn how to do it. And mm -hmm. the way I would explain this is that you could have two pots of fist and red paint and they could have come from the same factory at the same time, but I could have had mine open, it would have had more exposure to air and Ben's might be brand new. Those paints are going to thin very differently. Yeah. Um, so there's always that to consider. When it comes to the different consistencies such as layer glazes, there are tools out there you can buy where you can sort of paint over them and if you still see it, you're, you're too thin. But generally it is going to be trial and error. The other factor is going to be the colour you're using. So if you're using a colour like yellow, that's going to be much more, uh, much harder to cover in few coats because the pigment density isn't as great as something in like a Mephiston Red, for example. So there's, there's all these different factors that play and actually to be a better painter the way to do it is to experiment and see what works and the models are not the cheapest models in the world we all, we all know that they are expensive but what you do get with them is you get spare parts and I always get lots of questions about oh, well what if I did this color or that color instead of what I've maybe said to use in the video and actually my advice is go away get some spare parts prime them That's exactly what yeah I did. Yep. yeah and, and, and have a play around and see what works for you because even when we're talking about something like glazing to get glaze consistency across different colours it means you're going to have to put different amounts of water or different additives in them, so it really does depend on the paint you're using, the brand you're using, the binder that's been used. There's lots of different factors, so I wish I could sit here and say, do this, do this, do this. It is literally a little bit of trial and error. One thing I would say is when you are thinning paint is don't mix water directly into the paint. Have the, have the water on the side of the palette and then you can pull water into the paint and thin it as, as you need to. Particularly if you're using a wet palette, that, that'll help you get some... A bit more control as well. A bit more control, yeah, and consistency on it. The only thing that I've ever found that's helped me is keeping notes. Mm. So literally I did two drops of this paint, one drop of water. And if you have notes, you can at least refer back to it and at least because they might, I don't know about you, but whenever you're painting, I kind of lose myself and I'm like, oh, what did I do to achieve that look? Mm -hmm. If I just have a pen and paper and just, yeah, my friend I'm, does it as well. I'm really bad at that. I'm really bad yeah. at keeping track. So yeah, keep track stuff. Uh, what gets measured gets improved, as Peter Drucker said. Top top advice to live by in business. And uh, I probably should take that on board myself when it comes to painting. <laughs> Oops. Okay, so this is the 41st Millennium. Dave, do you enjoy using an airbrush or a hairy brush more? A hairy Which brush. Which we were discussing this, because yeah. you said hairbrush. Yeah. We both assumed. I'm, like, I'm, a, I'm a comb guy. Yeah. Um, the way I look at it is they're tools. 
and I like using my airbrush when I need to get stuff done quickly. Um, yeah. But similarly, it, it's not it's unless a you're faff, isn't it? Sometimes. It is faff, yeah. yeah. And and one of the things that I stop from using is I've got to get it out and put it together and get the ventilation going. So sometimes I'll just like I'll just paint because by the time yeah. I've painted it, I I will still be setting up. That said, I really enjoy getting certain gradients and doing techniques with an airbrush. Mm. But unless you're an absolute savant, it's really difficult to uh, get some really fine detail with the airbrush, which is why the brush. So, so as far as I'm concerned, they, I like them both equally. And the SIs are sitting on the fence, cop out, answer. But it's different horses for courses, different tools for different jobs. Yeah. Um, I'm conscious that I've deliberately not used the airbrush much, much on the channel because I think that potentially improves the accessibility. Mm-hmm. And where I do use an airbrush, very often there is a rattle can equivalent as well that you can use. So, for example, if I wanted to paint um, a, a grey colour, then I could base it black and then I could use Mechanicus grey over the top and that'll give me a, a ready-made gradient that is exactly what I do with an airbrush, just I'm using rattle cans instead. This is from Warhammer Mama. Mama. Tips on color blends slash transitions, especially when you're using different types of paints. Oh, and how to avoid streaky, blotchy whites. I recently painted Lady Olander and using plenty of medium to avoid chalkiness, but I suffered with streaks. Okay, so there's different ways you can do the blend. So we've got wet blending and we've got, um, you can then glaze over transitions to get the, the, the blend quite tight. So it depends on what you prefer to do. With wet blending, you kind of smush and paint together uh, to get that nice transition. The colours you choose will probably depend on specifically what you're painting, but also what works well together. Um, for glaze blending, obviously, you're going to make sure that the paint's much thinner. And what's really important with this, I think there's some other questions about glazes in there as well, but mm-hmm. is when you get it on your brush, is dab your brush on a paper towel before you go to the mini, and that takes most of the moisture out, leaving just the paint in the brush. So that makes glazing a bit more successful as well. In terms of white, so if I was painting someone like Lady Hollander, for example, I'd probably I'd be priming that white with like white scar, because that's a really nice spray primer. And then I'd just be being very careful about how I added some of the shading on it uh, to make sure I didn't have too many mistakes. If we've primed it a different color, we need to get a smooth white. I really love Corax white. Some people hate it. Yes, it is a clumpy mess in the pot, but actually once you thin it down with water, it covers really nicely. Mm-hmm. And then you can kind of build up from that. And because it's an off-white, you can then highlight it with a, a bright white. In terms of streaky whites, it can be quite challenging, but I think two, uh, I think paint brand can, can work in your face. So there's two, two paint brands that have got really great whites. You've got the AK white, but the one I use is Bold Titanium White from Pro Curl, which covers fantastically well. Got that, really I picked nice. that up myself. Yeah. It was actually really good. Yeah, it's really nice. Okay, a tabletop printer. How do you limit numbers of paints on a mini? Best I've done is 19, but goes up to like 52. Not 52, 50 as, as well. well. Yeah. As well, mm-hmm. It's a good question, and I think sometimes it's the way paint systems are, de- are designed is so that you buy several pots of paint when actually, if you learned a little bit about color mixing, for example, so if you had a green that you wanted to paint, you could have a mid green, mix a little bit of black in to make a darker green, then a bright yellow like dawn yellow or lemon mm-hmm. yellow or ice yellow from Vallejo, that will give you the much brighter green. So rather than buying three or four pots, you buy in two pots. So there's that that you can do is to learn how to, to mix the colours. The other thing is to really think about your colour scheme and plan it beforehand. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm not going to give any spoilers out, but we've had a discussion about you know what we're potentially going to do for uh, the New Year New Army project we're going to be working on together. And the key for both of us there, I think, is keeping it really simple, isn't it? Very simple. Yep minimal steps because we have multiple models yeah there's lots to paint <laughs> so we want to keep that down to a minimum and, that, and that's just just planning will really help us there and, and just thinking outside the box a little bit um i'll go back to the army painter fanatic stuff and, I, and army painter sent me the paints which was great so really grateful for them sending them out to me but there's only 50 paints so i had to really think on my feet about how to mix some of the highlights so that it wasn't desaturated or looking chalky or things like that so that's a good experiment you can do and a good exercise to like improve your learning and improve your color theory, I think. I actually use a color wheel. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. color wheel and you can kind of see the gradients and go, okay, if I want to go to this color at the end and I go yeah. three colors beneath that, okay, yeah. what do I need to mix and up? It tells muscle? you what you need to mix as well. Exactly, yeah. So you don't have to kind of think about it from thin air. This is from Son of Ball. 96 or Baal, Baal whatever you want to Baal. say. Uh, Baal. Will I ever get better? I feel like I've hit a wall. And I'm assuming this is to do with Obviously, painting that feeling. I mean, I feel like I know what that feels like. Feeling like mm. you've hit a certain limit. I can I, shall I answer this? You do. Yeah. Yeah. 
for me, when I feel like I've hit a wall, I will immediately go to people like yourself, watch how you achieve mm. certain things. Like if it's so that for the uh, the emulators, I think it was the emulators, the Space Marines? The... Uh, Infernus. Infernus, Infernus Marines. Marines, the new one yeah. with, Le yeah, with Leviathan. Yeah. I wanted to know how to make it look like the end of the gun was white hot from mm. like yeah. the flames. So I went, looked up one of your shorts. And I think it's just expanding your knowledge instead of trying to think of all the problems you solve yourself, reach outside and look to yeah. other people. Yeah, no, I think that's a good tip. And I think if you're if you're feeling stuck sometimes, uh, it, you just put it down and go and try something else. Paint something different. Paint something completely yeah. different. Yeah. And like I said, even if you haven't got anything different to paint, you're going to have spare parts on a sprue. So just maybe, uh, and I always talk about, I love Space Marines, but I just love Orcs as well. So when it comes to Space Marines, I love the regimented nature. I love the heraldry and all that stuff. It's very uniform. But there's another part of my brain which just absolutely adores the mentalness that is yeah. Orcs and how crazy they are. Yep. And that's so even if you've got a Space Marine painted like an Orc, for, for example, just to try something different to just maybe unlock that a little bit. And also sometimes, um, I would say start with the end in mind and, and think about why you're painting and what you're trying to achieve and what level you want to get to. Because it's really easy to pick up uh, a box which has been painted to the highest standard. You know, the box art is painted to the highest standard. And think, yeah. well, I want to achieve that. And actually, do you need to achieve that? And like, if you watch my videos, it'll show you how to get something that looks like the box art. You know, it's just a little rough around the edges. But that's fine and that's okay. Because actually, that if you paint everything like that, you'll have a great looking army on the tabletop. But really, it's just take a step back and, and remember... And I have to do this quite a few times as well. Remember, actually, we're doing this for fun and for enjoyment and relaxation. And, yep. and yeah, so I'd say just take that step back and have a little think about, okay, what am I trying to achieve? And how can I maybe take something totally different and paint it in wildly different colours? And hopefully that'll unlock some, some progress for you. This is from Eric Anthony 595 When you get a new project started, do you have a game plan on what colours to use? Or do you wing it and let creativity take over? It's kind of what we were doing today. It's really, kind of what we were doing today, yeah. There were many wings involved. Uh, many. None of which were chicken, uh, surprisingly. Lots of pork, though. Lots pork. <laughs> they, were, they were pork burgers. They were nice. <laughs> I think generally I've got a plan in my head. Uh, I think I said earlier that I really should get better at writing stuff down. So I've generally got a plan in my head. Generally know which colours are going to work together. And that, that's an experience thing because I've been using sit down paints for so long. So you just kind of get to know what works with what. So yeah, I'd say definitely have a plan in there. And sometimes, if you watch some of my videos, I'll do some things and techniques and blending and stuff like that. It's, it's stuff I've just thought of, and I just get very lucky sometimes with, with how it turns out. So yeah, generally have a plan, that's a good idea. Jack Lelang, one question I have about paints. I've yet to see a video breakdown the biggest players in terms of cost cover color match with completion, or competition, sorry. Okay, uh, when I do my army paint a Fanatic review, I will uh, try and include something like that in there for you, and I'll compare it against um, Probably get Pro Crawl Citadel, maybe Vallejo game colour as well. This is from Man Oil. Oil washes, do you need, not oil, oil. Oil washes, do oil. you need to var varnish them before applying them? Uh, every time three I have used oil washes, parts of the previous layer have peeled off. What am I doing wrong? Okay. I uh, don't know what you're doing wrong. Generally, if you use an oil wash over acrylic, it won't reactivate it because the, um, the spirit is not compatible chemically. I'm not a scientist, so I <laughs> tell you exactly what it is. Um, so it could be that you've not let the uh, paint dry properly. It might be that the primer wasn't quite set uh, before you started painting on it. So there could be lots of things like that. Again, what I say to everyone is if you've experienced that and then you've tried it with varnish and the varnish has helped it, put varnish down because you can always go, you know, you can always do the oil wash with confidence. And the other thing with putting something like a gloss varnish down, it helps the capillary action on the oil as well, pulling it into the recesses. I tend not to do it when I'm doing tutorial videos because I'm on a bit of a time schedule. Timeline, so it yeah. just saves that, putting the, the gloss down, letting it dry, then the oil, letting the oil dry, matte varnishing over it. Use varnish if, if and hopefully that'll protect your layers. But make sure it's really dry, maybe give it 24 hours to set before you then go and put the oil wash on. The biscuit brown. What is the actual correct way to edge highlight? I've seen people run a brush along the actual edge. I've also seen them paint a line next to the edge as well. What's the best one or way to do it overall? 100% depends on the shape that you're trying to edge highlight. So if yep. you've got a hard angular shape, then it's really easy to get a little bit of paint on your brush and just drag the edge along the shape. And that'll give you a really nice crisp edge highlight. When you're painting over something that's not got that on there, you'll have to just be very careful in terms of painting the lines on there. Um, so that's probably why you see people doing the different things. 
I also find painting down is much easier than painting sideways. Yeah, so don't be afraid to rotate your model. Yeah. That's, uh, that's an easy win as well. This is from Ziesel44. Do you find battle damage is worth the time added to the painting process? Depends on the effect you're going for, really. Yeah. Um, yeah. If you are painting something like Orcs, for example, then battle damage absolutely adds to it. Oh, it adds, yeah. Similarly, if you are painting something that might be a quick and easy scheme, like I did a video on Raptors, and they were designed to be a little bit battle damaged, it really added to it because it's the atmosphere that you create within the army you're painting. So I think, yeah, think start with the end in mind, what you want your force to look at, and then, then go from there. It's from Mick Piglet. 101. If you were to stick with one brand of paint for the rest of your life, what would it be? That's a good question. Um, I'd probably say Citadel because that's the one I've got the most experience with. This is the one I've got the most pots of paint for. And whilst there are other brands out there that, you know, personally you may prefer, I, I'd say that because I know how it works. So I know that I'd get exactly the same result time after time with it. Another one about eyes. I'm just yeah, If I see one about eyes, I'm yeah, just we'll, going to we'll say... Yeah, we'll skip the eyes. we yeah. answer the eyes question. Um, brew paints, why are my glazes chalky? Don't know. You could be over thinning them so that the binder breaks down and you've got more pigment. Uh, it could be just the paint itself is not of the highest quality. Um, there's lots of reasons why glazes might be chalky. Try adding in a glaze medium to thin it as opposed to just water that and see if that helps. And obviously wipe your brush off on a paper towel before you touch the miniature because if it's too wet you'll deposit uh, too much pigment in one place which could give you an ugly chalky looking pool. This is from William J. 46.35. Do you feel like painting different miniatures using, uses different skills, like painting a Warhammer mini versus something like a model plane or car? Yes, I do think it does. I think if you so with model planes and cars, I think you I mean you can you can use the same techniques with some of it, but I, I'd say with cars, planes, you're probably using the airbrush a bit more. You're probably using Smooth, different kind yeah. of techniques, whereas with a Warhammer miniature, you because it's much smaller than, yeah, you're just looking at more brushwork. It's just different materials, really, isn't it? It is, yeah. I mean, I paint, I did a Tamiya motorcycle a while back, and that, literally, there was no brush painting. That was all airbrush painting, because it's big panels, lots of varnish, decals, uh, and also you, you probably polish that as well to make it really shiny, so it looks quite metallic. So, yeah, it's a, yeah I'd say it's different, different skills. Excellent. This is from Joe Thomas at 137. Best way to have a smooth finish on the yellow shoulder pad for my Space Wolves? Depending on what tools you're using, if you're using an airbrush, then I would mask it off, spray it pink, highlight it with white, and then spray it with Impure Fist Contrast Paint. If you're not using an airbrush, then I would paint it with uh, Corax White, and I would then use Imperial Fist Yellow Contrast Paint over that. And then I'd probably just add a little bit of a second coat of it, just on the underside where you're going to get the shadow. This is from Lars Palak. Best way for you to stay motivated? I should have to defer to you on that, because you're into you're yeah. a motivated chap. Yeah, I think do what you enjoy. Mm. I'm doing my box to board challenges. I've had to do a lot of models that are all very similar and just as, as in a short period of time as possible. <laughs> So if I find myself looking at a certain model, I'm like, oh, I can't wait to paint him, can't wait to paint him, but I've got to get through these. It's my, it's my hobby. Mm -hmm. I'll just paint the one I want to paint yeah. and then get back to those. I usually kind of have, if I'm, for example, painting a lot of the same miniature, maybe I'll break up every three with one I really want to do. Do another three, break up something I want to do. And I yeah. kind of do that. Again, it's, this is supposed to be enjoyable. Yeah. And Try and enjoy it. Yeah, and the classic is how do you eat an elephant? It's, it's one bite at a time, isn't it? Yep. Please don't eat elephants. They, they're wonderful, gracious creatures. <laughs> don't, don't be doing that. This We're is, animal lovers. We are indeed. Um, Mine's trotting around the back. Yes, yeah, so you, you may have heard him. him. Yeah. The lolly dog. He's lovely. This is um, Lord Verlus of Nurgle. Okay, would you do a video on dry brushing and over brushing and the effects of glazing, please? I will add it to the queue. Um, no guarantee on how soon it'll come, but yeah, I, I will certainly do that. I would say if, you, if you're interested in learning about dry brushing and over brushing, have a look at the Fletcher Decors tutorials I've done recently, uh, because I do, on the Vargov Courtier, I do quite a bit of over brushing, and I also do dry brushing on there as well, so you can have a look at that for those two techniques. Uh, and for glazing, I'm, I've got a video coming up soon, which I can't tell you what it is uh, yet, but that will also have some glazing on there as well. So I'll talk a little bit about how you actually make that glaze, what it looks like. This is from CJ456, and they've got a, a Philadelphia Eagles as their profile. Ooh. Janice is a big fan of them. <laughs> how do I finish a whole army? 
Um, well, firstly, I'm, I'm only booing because I'm a Bucks fan, and we've got you in the uh, wild card game this weekend. So um, I'm a Falcons fan. So well, I'm, I'm yeah. just. I'm uh, just here. It's I'm, okay. just, I'm here. Uh, someone has to be. <laughs> so how do you finish a whole army? Well, I guess, how do you eat an elephant? Don't yeah, eat elephants. Yeah. Uh, one, one bite at a time. But I think certainly it can be, and we'll be finding this out now when we do our 2,000 point New Year New Army, but certainly it's like maybe pick a, do a squad, then maybe a character, then another squad. Mm -hmm. But certainly plan that army out and what it looks like. Think about your colour scheme. Get excited about it because it's like anything in life. If you don't get excited, nothing happens. So you've got to want to do it. You've got to be invested in it, not just because it's maybe the meta army of the moment, but because it's something you like and we're very big advocates of rule of cool. Yep, definitely. I think batch painting as well does really help break that down a little bit. And you know, feel like I did that the other day with some models I can't talk about yet, but getting that through and also focusing on what will make the model look closer to finished sooner. Mm -hmm. So if there's big panels, if there's big colors or, or colors that are going to be used quite a lot on the model, try and get those done first, because yeah. then you're going to look at it and go, oh, okay, there's actually not much more to go. You can kind of keep yourself yeah. motivated that I way. Think colour primers as well is actually a, oh, yeah. uh, an underrated one. So if you're in the UK, Colour Forge is great. They've got a massive range of colour primers. If you're not in the UK, um, then Army Painter have also got their own colour primers. I, I don't get on very well with them, but you, you may like them. So yeah, you can try the colour primers out, because that'll cut out quite big chunks as well. This is from a new realm, uh, quite a common one, but I still quite can't quite. I still well, you can't. Either, I can't, can't speak, speak either. Yeah. Apparently, it's been a long day. Quite a common one, but I still can't crack a simple plasma glow. I was I was speaking about this earlier as well. Okay, so simple plasma glow. Um, all you need to do is decide what colour you want the plasma glow to be. Paint the coils with Corax white. Highlight them with a bright white, like bold titanium white, and then use a contrast paint of your choosing to paint over that. Obviously, wait for it all to dry, and that'll give you a really simple plasma glow. If you wanted to do a bit of OSL, so that's where the light spills out onto the model, then before you do the white bits, you can maybe uh, dry brush a darker version of the colour. So if you're doing an orange plasma glow, for example, you might dry brush some Troll Slayer orange and a little bit of maybe Mephiston red, just to help blend it into the case of the weapon, then do the white bit, and that'll give you a little bit of OSL with your plasma glow. On to YouTube. Yeah, we're flying through these. Let's go. YouTube. At least I hope this is entertaining and <laughs> you're getting some information. But again, if we come across questions that are already answered, then we, we're just going to skip through them. So this is from Watts18269. I'd love to see some tips on unique camouflage patterns. There are loads of desert, urban, etc. on YouTube. Not sure uh, active camouflage is even possible, but I would love to see your attempt or try to emulate. I'm not sure what active camouflage is. Um, uh, yeah, someone's actually asked that. What's active camouflage, yeah. please? I probably should know this being excellent. I think what they're talking about is, I've seen this where the camouflage looks like it's starting to go up. It's all you can almost see like the hexagonal okay. shapes, and it looks like it's like a digital thing. Okay, um, that'd be a cool one. But yeah, it'd be a cool one. I mean, I've done I've done camouflage. Maybe maybe we'll have a look at it. Um, if there's uh, for digital camo, for example, there's a channel called By Painted. It's quite an old channel, so I'm not sure if it still exists. But he did digital camo on a Tau devil fish, and that's really, really uh, quite cool using templates and stuff. So check that out. This is from Super Mario Gene. Also, I recently, also I recently learning. Oh, okay. So I've recently learned how to paint Warhammer miniature. I want to know how you do like the shading and other color schemes of the gun, even the armor as well. Means so. I'm Watch my videos because I've got so many Space Marine videos. Yeah. Pick a color. Any color, uh, and there'll be, a, there'll be a Space Marine video uh, that you can watch and uh, yeah, talk you through it. And then if you've got any questions about that video, leave a comment on that video and I'll, I'll give you a reply there. Next one is about brush care. We've covered that already. Cover brush care, That's yeah. Digital, Master's soap. Digital dog muck, just to shout them out. Um, but yeah, you've already covered that. This is Cadda's Under. What is the best way to write on parchments, books and seals, etc.? Minis without having to try and trace over. What brush size would you recommend and how would you how should you dilute your paint? So uh, I would dilute your paint. So black paint is probably the best way because that's going to stand out the most depending on, on how you've actually painted the parchment. Obviously, if you painted red parchment, then white paint might be better. In terms of brush size, it's not so much the size of the brush that matters. It's the how good the tip yeah, is. Yeah. So you've got a really good tip on it. And one way to get that is when you put it out of the paint is to twist the brush. You get that really good point. And then the other thing to think about with the brush is to make sure it's got a decent belly in it as well. It's going to hold paint because what you want to happen is as you're painting the text on is you want that constant flow of paint so that it doesn't dry out. So if you're using a very small brush, 
that's probably not gonna gonna help. It'll dry out and you'll be going back for the palette. You'll make more mistakes because you've got lumps of paint on your brush and things like that. So I'd say that's the best way to do it. If I come across, um, I'm trying to think, I've not got any videos where I paint parchments specifically. Uh, I've got one on purity seals, uh, but I don't think I went into how I did the, the text on it. So that might be something I do in a future video. I, whenever I'm doing it, from my little experience of doing it, I just make sure it's not just squiggly lines. I try and have different shapes. Yeah. Yeah. So it looks like text, because text is not just squiggly line, yeah. there's different shapes yeah. and even just adding you can, yeah, and like you triangles can, and yeah, stuff yeah. to it. And, and you can even use a micron pen as well, just yes. get a really fine tip micron pen because there's nothing that says you have to use paint. This is from Daniel Serene, 7184. How do you decide slash test out colour schemes? I'm trying to do a variation of the Hive Fleet Kraken, but can't decide what I like the most. If you're not sure what colours going to, get, to go together, get a colour wheel and have a look at what sits opposite, opposite on, yeah. on a colour wheel, because that'll work for you. Take some spare parts and practice different colour schemes to come up with something that, that works for you. I think I, it's just experiment and see, see what you like. For me, if I'm planning a scheme, I always start with a colour wheel and, and go from there. Uh, Jacob Maynard, tips on choosing a chapter. I'm stuck. So actually, I actually had to do this the other day. <laughs> How long's a piece of string? That's really difficult. I'm not sure I can answer that one. Um, I, I have something, because I had to do this recently with the Marines I got. So one, what colour attracts your eye immediately? Mm. Then if you're stuck between two potential, or even three or four, which I was, I got Ollie to pick for me. Yeah, okay. <laughs> which was pretty handy, my dog. Uh, I made him literally pick four tubs and whatever one he went to. The other thing I would say is maybe look into the lore. Mm -hmm. Because yeah. you may find that the lore of a certain chapter is really cool to you, and then that kind of makes your decisions. You're like, if you, and that's the thing that really changed Warhammer for me in general was learning about the actual stories behind the models. That gets you more invested in them. Like salamanders, the yeah. goodest boys. The goodest They'll boys. They'll sacrifice a hundred of them to save one human. Blood angels. You know, so you've got so many chapters. But I think if you're stuck on the paint scheme. Maybe look at the lore. Yeah. And don't forget help. as well, with the, the current edition of, of the game, you can have any you can colour chapter, and they, yeah. but you can play the different attachments as well, so it's not tied into playstyle. Uh, Delta Charlie, what consistency should paint be for basing, layering, glazing, etc.? I think I've already kind, kind of covered that. that. So I've got a video which I'll link in the description to this one about how you thin paints and what the different consistencies are, with the caveat that I said earlier that every paint's different. Uh, uh, I'd like to know how to paint warm yellow cloth. A uh, really simple way to paint warm yellow cloth is to base it Corox white and then cover it with the and yellow um, contrast paint. That'll give you warm yellow. The other way, if you want to do a layer style, is to base it with Avalanche Sunset and layer it with Aerial Yellow and then just put a touch of Dawn Yellow into Aerial Yellow to highlight it, mm -hmm. just because that'll keep the warmth. It's from Oh My, Bo oh my God Quack. Is hydro dipping miniatures A possible, B practical, C size scale dependent? I don't know what hydro dipping is. Is that like carbon fiber? Like when you dip it in? I don't, I don't, I don't know, know what hydro that dipping is. is either. Please, please expand. What is hydro dipping? Yeah. Uh, hydro dipping. Hydro dipping. I will try and answer it. Um, but certainly dipping is a technique you can use in miniatures. An army painter got dip, quick shade dip, the, yeah. the, the pioneers. So yeah, potentially, but I'm not 100% sure what it is. Uh, Minecraft Bros 24, how do you load the brush with paint so you're not running out too quick or overloading? Depends on the brush uh, that you're using, the shape and things like that, but generally it's, it's that technique where you just put it in the paint, twist it as you pull it towards you, and then have a look at it. So if you've got a good point, that's enough paint. If you've got a chiselly point because you've got too much paint on there, then that's pretty clear and obvious. I can actually answer this next one because okay. I asked it. Uh, Gary Champion, what do you use to fill gaps? Um, I've tried liquid green stuff and various other fillers, but never seems to fill smoothly, so joint cannot be seen. Any tips? You said to me. But yeah, I'd say Milliput is good because it, I think it's, it's easier to smooth over and easier to, to sculpt into gaps. The other thing you can do is um, create sprue goo, sprue, where you put some old sprue into a bottom of Tamir, extra thin when you got to the bottom, and that'll basically turn into a plastic goo. Um, and then, yeah, so you can use this to fill gaps, small gaps, which is really nice and effective for that. Um, yeah, so you can do that too. Uh, this is kind of similar to what we got asked already. How do you finish painting an army when you're sick of painting? Yeah, do something else uh, yeah. and then go back to Take it. Take a break. Uh, or power through. I, literally, it's just whatever works for you. Um, because, you know, remember why you started as well, I think, is, is important. And remember what you're trying to achieve, what you're trying to get to, and how mm -hmm. good you feel when you've, when you've done that. Also, as a, a rule that's worked for me, is play a game. Mm. 
and you, you'll see your unpainted models on the board and you'll be like, I really want that painted. Yeah. And then that might give you that yeah. new motivation or it might give you motivation to paint a unit you, know, yeah. you haven't painted yet. Or someone might leave a comment on your story on Instagram saying, oh, unpainted models. They, uh, yeah, like they do. Yeah. <laughs> unpainted <laughs> models. <laughs> Yuck. Yeah, test game. Test game. Uh, Ray Dane, what were you doing before you became the painting coach on YouTube? Um, what I'm still doing, so I'm, I'm not a full-time YouTuber, believe it or not. Um, I do this in my spare time and I work in human resources, so yes. This is from Nikot9920. What are the three techniques that all painters at any painting level need continuously become a better painter and why? I would say colour theory, so understanding which colours work together. Mm -hmm. I would say if you want to be a really good painter, now I'm talking like world-class painter, is understanding of light mm -hmm. because when we paint maybe in like the heavy metal style, we don't consider light Source, as much yeah, yeah. Uh, as perhaps, you know, if you think about somebody who paints on canvas, but even if you look at the Golden Demon winners, if you look at the lighting and how they use volumetric lighting, depending on the shape of the model, mm -hmm. light source, that, that's a really important one. Uh, and I think the third one is how to apply paint, which might seem really obvious and straightforward, yeah, but yeah. there are lots of different ways of how you apply paint and how that works for you is going to be based on you and your own experience rather than something I can tell you about. So I'd always say go out and experiment. Um, and like I said, I know the models are expensive, but you can buy lower quality models to practice on. Mm -hmm. You can go and do eBay rescues to practice on, or you can just use spare parts to practice on. So I'd say that, that uh, commitment to continuous improvement. It's from Ty Curry. How do you stop contrast from going all splotchy and uneven? It depends what you mean by splotchy and uneven. I think um, I know what he's talking about because this happened to me the other day. It's like a hydrophobic where it kind of beads up. Yeah, it kind yeah. of gets a bit gloopy. Um, yeah. Someone's actually answered in this so that might actually help the uh, the direction of it. Shake them up and add a little bit of water to them, like a drop or two, sometimes adding contrast medium sorts it out. Uh, I'm looking at you, black Templar contrast. <laughs> Alternatively, you might uh, be it might be a brush, room temperature, base coat of the model, so on and so forth. There's Yeah, he's, he's given yeah. a very, very good, yeah. like, Answer. Yeah. Um, I mean, why probably? I, I think it's covered in our answers on the question as well. Is when Games Workshop changed, the, or they brought the second range of contrast paints out, and they changed the formulation of all the first colours to match the formulation of the same. So I think that had a big impact. What I mentioned about hydrophobic is some, uh, so it's basically when you you put the contrast paint on, it'll bead up because it can't actually spread out because it reacts with what's underneath. So it may be dependent on the primary you've used or the colour you you've used underneath. And this can happen sometimes when you use a different brand, Citadel. I think, in my experience, if I use Citadel paints and then contrast paint over it, it works absolutely fine. But sometimes if I've used AK White, for example, sometimes I get a hydrophobic response where the, the contrast does just bead up and it, it leaves a, an ugly blotchy thing. So, yes, hopefully that, that helps. And there's, so thank you to the person who left the very detailed answer on there. So I think we've got only a couple of questions left now. We're on... Uh, this last one for last YouTube. One, I just yeah. wanted to be ahead okay. with the X. Sorry. Uh, I want to paint Tyranid, bit, but the white clothes are too hard to do. Can I make? Can you make a guide? The white clothes? Does he? It's a bit not, of not a bit of broken English there, unfortunately. Yeah, that's um, fine. But, but what I would say is that I've got a couple of Tyranid painting videos on the channel you can watch. I've also got a short on how to paint white cloth, and I've got two videos on white armor. So hopefully that should cover all your white needs. Um, if not, leave a comment on one of those videos, and I can try and help you some more. Okay, so this guy from X has just said how much he appreciates your, your tutorials. Thank you. I hope, uh, yeah, I hope they're useful. This is from Warlord, Warlord of Ditcot. Painting blue OSL into light colours with skin tones or bone, how do you achieve an OSL reflection without making it look dark? This isn't such a problem with red or orange in those brighter colours, but blue is a headache. If you can do it with the other colours, you should be able to do it with blues. I suppose the, the challenge with that is making sure that it doesn't go green or look green. And I think really what, we'd pro or what I'd be looking to do is just to build up that layer, the layers really slowly. So I, wouldn't, I don't mean painting on layers. I mean you can either glaze it on or you can probably stipple it on with a dry brush with thin down paint, very little paint, and then hopefully that would build up that effect. Um, what I would be interested in, because that's on X, so if you want to post a picture of what you mean so I can just visualise it. So, yeah, we've, we've been discussing this today, we're both very visual very. people. Yep. Uh, so we need to see things. Show me to, it. Yeah, show, show me it. I can work it out. And, then, yeah, we'll, and I, I could try and figure it out on X for you. This is from Thundermouser. I'm going to throw in a standard of mine, paintbrushes. What are the best ones to learn with? When do you move on to better quality ones? And which one do you use as well? How often do you buy new ones? So I already said which brand I use. So I use Rosemary yep. & Co. And I moved to Rosemary & Co. from Windsor & Newton because Windsor & Newton got very expensive and the quality wasn't quite there, what, it was, what I was used to. So I would go with Rosemary & Co. I would say their 
great brushes and they're also very affordable brushes, I would swap straight away. I'd just, just get a better quality brush because there's no substitute for using a really good quality brush. Yeah. Um, so I'd 100% say get, get one straight away. The rosemary ones, like I said, are very reasonable, so I'd probably treat them quite rough, and I do, do probably order new brushes once every two or three months because I'm painting constantly, so I'm going through a lot more. But certainly, by looking after them, they last a lot longer than that. Did I cover all of you? Yeah, yep. Lovely. Uh, Nick Britton, how do you go on getting the perfect amount of paint on the brush for dry brushing? That's a good question. Um, I'm not sure I know the answer to that, um, because it, it generally, if you're going to wipe it off on a paper towel, you want to be at a point where there's very little paint left on the brush yep. but if you're not using a paper towel and you're using something like a uh, texture palette for example because you want to keep some of the moisture in there then probably very similar you just want very little coming off the brush uh, so that's when you've probably got just about the right amount I would just say you're better going less because you can always add more but yes. it's always hard to yeah, take good, more. very good point. yeah it's always very hard to take point, paint yeah. off than it is add yeah see well, I got this guy on. I've done, some painting. On I've done some painting. Um, not as much as you, so but some models of me this year, probably. Well, it's only 2024, so <laughs> yeah. I, might, I might actually be winning that one. Uh, this is from the Welsh Mini Painter. Ways of undercoating in the Welsh winter. So difficult. Uh, I mean, if you've got an airbrush, great, you can prime inside. But actually, uh, if it's raining, then it's a no go. But in, in all honesty, what I do is I warm my cans up before I shake them. So I boil the kettle, fill a glass jar with them. I'm, Disclaimer now, I'm not responsible for you being an <laughs> idiot in the kitchen and scolding yourself. But boil the kettle, put it into um, a Pyrex jar or, or bowl or something like that. Then add cold water to it so it's not boiling anymore, so it's warm. And then pop your paint can in there. Don't forget about it because if the paint cans get too warm, they can't explode. So you just want to leave it in there for a couple of minutes just to warm the can through. Then give it a really good shake for two minutes, then go out and prime. Now, obviously, when it's out there and it hits the cold air, it's going to change the, the properties of the paint so you want to do it as quickly as you can and that's really the only advice I can give. I was actually out in over between Christmas and New Year's out priming because we had some nice weather and that's what I did and the prime was perfectly fine. It's from Marius Gage. I would like tips on extending brush life expectancy and maintenance. Kind of covered that. In yeah the, I kind of covered it. Brush, I yeah. think if just use a good quality brush, show, uh, brush soap. Uh, so I use Masterson's and that, that's great and that, that'll last you a long time as well. So whilst it might be a bit pricey to buy initially, it's gonna last you a long time. So just use that. Um, if you really keen, maybe use it every, every couple of days, every week. The other thing I would say is try to never let the, the paint don't yeah, dip your paint brush yeah. in yeah, too far because that's something I did for ages and it wrecked the brush immediately. Yeah. So it's something very simple that people might not know, but... Yeah, yeah. the ferrule yeah. is the metal bit that the hair goes into. So if you let the paint get in there, it can start to rot away some of the glue, which means you start to lose hairs and it'll lose shape. And this is the last question. Last question. Yeri Valence, is model air chrome still the best tasting paint on the market? <laughs> or have you tried any new flavours? The challenge it for the number one spot recently. I'm not a brush licker, so I can tell you what any of the paint tastes like. You are. I am. Um, there we are. So, what, have you found any nice tasting paint recently? I mean, I, I preferably like to make sure the, there's no paint on the brush. Mm -hmm. um, I can't give you an answer. I mean, they all taste the same to yeah. me. I've never, chicken. I've never been. <laughs> it's all tastes like chicken to me. <laughs> I've never been a brush licker, so I can't say. But watch the painting phases video where they have um, the guy used to work in GW product design on. And whilst the paints are non-hazardous, they certainly have some particularly hazardous things in them. So I would strongly discourage you from uh, eating paint. Yeah, make sure there's no paint on the brush before you lick it. That's that's the pro tip right there. There we are. Well, thank you, Ben, for asking those questions, and thank you so much for uh, taking the time to ask them. I hope I've helped. Uh, like I said, I'm more than happy. If you've got any questions on the back of this, let me know down below. Hopefully, we've got some really good content coming out for you in 2024 uh, that will really help move you along your journey, and that'll be a little more entertaining than just me kind of sitting there telling you how to paint a model. So, thank you so much. If you liked the video, let me know uh, by leaving a like and a comment down below. And if you haven't already, please consider subscribing to the channel. I really, really would appreciate it. Check out some of my painting content here. I'll see you next time.